When you look at the 2019 Philadelphia Eagles offense and what they were lacking, there's no real secret about what it was, and it really comes down to one simple word, speed. It doesn't take an Einstein to realize that the speed that Deshaun Jackson brought with him week one was completely and utterly game-breaking for the Philadelphia Eagles offense. Without it, they were not the same team. In fact, if you really want to see the effect that the loss of Deshaun Jackson had on this offense, just go look at the numbers. In 2019, the Philadelphia Eagles finished 27th in passing yards per completion with 9.7. And if you look at the top five teams in that stat, Tampa Bay, Dallas, Kansas City, Tennessee, and Seattle, all of them have pretty comparable things when it comes to the fact that they all have wide receivers that get, have, guess what, speed. So when the Philadelphia Eagles selected Jalen Rager, the wide receiver from TCU, with the 21st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, I was kind of shocked by the responses from Eagles fans. Many were disappointed that we didn't draft Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver from LSU, who ended up going a couple picks later to the Minnesota Vikings. And I can understand why. All you have to do is look at the stat line. And when you look at Justin Jefferson and his 111 grabs and 1,540 yards and 18 touchdowns last year with LSU. And you look at Jalen Rigor's 43 grabs for 611 yards and 5 touchdowns. I can understand the disappointment. Justin Jefferson is bigger. He's put up better numbers. He played with a flashier quarterback on the flashier team. And he has better hands and he's more physical. Yeah, all those things are true. But the one thing that Jalen Rigor has that Justin Jefferson can never have is true game-breaking elite speed. The type of speed that keeps defensive coordinators up at night. I want to do a deep dive into what Joan Rager brings to the Philadelphia Eagles, both the positive things and some of the not so positive things. So let's jump right into it. Pure speed, Joan Rager has it. And it's that simple. Lots of fans are going to criticize me for saying that he's fast. Uh, they obviously have not watched game tape. Yes, he ran a slow uh, 40 time at 447, but when you look at how he plays, he runs way faster than that, and lots of people don't know that he actually bulked up to go to the combine, and when he ran that 40 time, he was around 10 pounds heavier than what his playing weight was probably around. He weighed in at around 206 pounds at the combine, and he's probably going to weigh more around 195 when it comes to his playing time, and when it comes down to that, he also is reported to have ran a 4-2-2 at his unofficial pro day, and those were with hand timers, so you take that with whatever grain of salt you will. But Joan Regor is fast. I'd say he's definitely not 4-4-7 slow, or that's not even slow, but he's definitely not that slow. And he's probably not 4-2-2 fast. I'd say he hovers around probably low 4-3, so like 4-3 to 4-3-4 four range-ish. He's fast. That's all you need to know. We look at this first play against Ohio State, and granted this was called back due to penalty, you can still see how much faster he is. He completely outruns his teammates on the way to the end zone, and that is the type of speed he can bring to this team. If you look at this play against Texas, the DB is giving him 8 yards of cushion, and he eats it up extremely fast, and he actually beats the defender and gets more than just a step on him. He has almost a yard or two of separation on this DB. And this play against Texas is the sole occurrence of this. This film is littered with plays where he's completely burning past DBs. If you look at this game against Texas back in 2018, he doesn't even need the speed entirely to completely beat the DB. He runs a good sluggo and he's, his sluggos are one of the best routes he runs actually in his route tree. And the speed he possesses is just completely unnecessary almost on this play he's beaten the DB not only with great route running but with that elite deep speed that he possesses on this play against Oklahoma State he beats the DB with another exceptional route on this stop and go and again the speed is almost an afterthought here he beat the DB so badly with this elite level route right here and the speed you just look at the separation. He has like five yards of separation on this DB. And if the quarterback doesn't underthrow the ball that much, he wouldn't even have to have high point in this ball the way he had to here. And he would have had an easy touchdown. 
and this throw is indicative of Jalen Rager's season and the quarterback play he had to deal with. Quarterback Max Duggan was a freshman this year and throws like this were really common and it did not help Jalen Rager's production. He could have upped his total on this play alone by 40 yards and maybe a touchdown with a great throw and that's what he didn't get and you can go check out Brett Coleman's video. He does this topic way more justice than I ever could. Jalen Rager isn't just a one-trick pony, however. This speed can also translate really well to burst and being able to make plays in open field, and that's something Jalen Rager excels at. When you look at this play against Ohio State, it's a simple screen, and he's able to make a really nice cut immediately and cut, cut it back uh, into the sideline. And you can see that burst where he's almost running away from these guys and if the sideline wasn't there he probably would have gotten way more than what he got here on this play against texas he just runs a quick hitch puts his left foot in the ground and explodes off of it and you can see he beat that first db extremely easily and it took multiple guys to actually take him down at the end of this he has that burst and his ability to make plays in open field. And this might actually be Jalen Rigger's biggest asset and the best thing he brings to the Philadelphia Eagles. His ability to make the first man miss is really impressive. On this play against Oklahoma State, it ends up being another screen and he gets the ball and first thing he does, boom, cut, makes the first guy completely whiff on him, makes the first two guys whiff on him, and his momentum actually carries him out and he ends up falling because of it, but still extremely impressive. Speed is a defensive coordinator's nightmare and what Joan Rigger brings on the speed front and his elusiveness helps essentially warp the defense and his ability to be used in pre-snap motion is something pretty underrated actually. You see in this play against Texas that actually ended up losing yards, but he is used on handoffs pretty often actually, and if you literally stop the play the minute you see the quarterback hand the ball fall, fall off, and even before that, you see all the linebackers shifting to the left side. Literally everyone's running that way, and it's a great tackle by the linebacker, but again, Joe Rugger helps pretty much change the flow of the defense. On this play against West Virginia, Jalen Rugger ends up getting the handoff as well and ends up pitching it, but if luck, he makes the entire defense commit to rushing that left side and it's an easy gain for his wide receiver that he pitched it to. And if you keep an tally on most of these plays, he's having eight yards of separation between him and the DB and he's burning through a lot of it as well. He's going to have a lot of defensive backs playing off of him because of what he can do and that could really play mind games in the defense. So he's also adding that sort of mind game type of mentality and that functionality for the Eagles offense in 2020. Rigor isn't just speed and elusiveness in open field though. He also has some abilities to make some physical catches. And if you see this play against West Virginia, he, the defensive back is all over him on this slant and he's able to catch it through contact. And not only does he do that, but he also shakes the tackler off of him. And he does end up fumbling here, but the fumbles aren't really an issue in his game. That's just more of him getting you know, quadruple team. But he has the ability to make those physical contested grabs when needed. And against this play against Texas, he's running a goal line fade almost. And not almost, that's exactly what he's running. And again, Rigor isn't a big guy. He's a hair under six foot and maybe 195 maybe even 190 when he's playing against this uh, team at that point of time, but he has that ability to physically high point the ball, and you can use him in the red zone when needed. He has the speed and elusiveness to also do that when needed, but he can go up there and make contested grabs as well. And I think this play against Oklahoma State really summarizes this. Again, it's a poor throw by the quarterback, and he has to adjust after he's beaten the DB, and you can see him just go up there, fight through the contact, and he goes down with it. He high points the ball and the DB tries to make contact late and knock it out and Rigger has the stable hands to go up and make that grab. Now on this play against West Virginia, you see him running a go route. He does an inside jab with his left foot initially and then he has enough speed to beat the defensive back 
and it's again a pretty poor throw almost not really leading him but he goes up there fights with a contact that the DB initiates on him and again he high points the ball and comes down with it it's a skill that he possesses and you may say those are just some no-name DBs but here you see him doing it against Ohio State against the third overall pick Jeff Akuda where he runs a dig route and it's not the best route I will give you that it's not the best route whatsoever but he fights through the contact that Jeff Akuda is making Jeff Akuda has his hands on the ball and he has the tight hands and the strong hands to pull it in from him and again Joe Rigger has that ability to make you know those contested grabs and be physical that being said, again, he's only 5'11 five foot, five foot and around 195 pounds. He's not going to really bowl over, guys. This isn't like almost, this isn't like a Megatron type of receiver here or, or DeAndre Hopkins. He's not going to break many tackles. That way, he's gonna if he causes missed tackles, it's because of his elusiveness. So the physicality-wise, he's physical when it comes to catching the ball, and he has that tool, a tool in his arsenal but he's not physical when it comes to after the catch. Joe Rigger also gives you the ability to put him back there and have him return some kicks. And this kick return kick against well, West Virginia was pretty remarkable, actually. He, you know, backpedals and weaves his way through defensive players like it's nothing. And then you see that burst to get away from the last guy. Again, he has the ability to return punts, and he returned two for touchdowns in his uh, latest campaign in 2019. So, Philly wants to put him back as a punt returner. He can do that, and he might even break one every couple years. Now, Rigger is an all sunshine and rainbows. He does have a slight drop issue. I'd say it's more concentration drops, and he just sort of turns upfield before he actually gets his hands on the ball. See, on this play against Texas, he's running a wide receiver screen, and his hips are turned away from the ball. They're turned upfield, and he drops it. Again, he's more concentrated on turning upfield than he is catching the ball. And this isn't like a normal occurrence. It, it does happen sometimes. It happened here as well on this another, another play against West Virginia where he turns up field before he actually gets his hands on the ball. Again, these are more concentration issues, and I think he can definitely clear those up. You do get the occasional drop here that he shouldn't. You can't really chart up to concentration drops. This play against Texas, he has the defender beat, and... It's a dime by the quarterback, actually, and he just drops the over-shoulder throw. So he does have those drop issues, and he did have the third worst catch percentage in college football last year. He had a 16.4% drop rate in nine drops last year, and again, that's not the best thing you want to see in a player of his caliber and especially his draft capital. But I think that this is something that can easily be ironed out if he puts his mind to it and, you know, has less concentration issues and he actually catches the ball before he runs. And when you look at Rigor, though, for every one of these drops he has, he has another remarkable catch. Here's a play against Damon Arnett, another first-round corner from Ohio State, and he, he beats him off the line on the deep uh, on the deep route, uh, over deep nine it is, and then he makes an incredible one-handed grab and he has incredible catches like these for all the bad drops he has he has you know positive potential and negative potential if he works on the drops he could be amazing and if he doesn't work on the drops well then it's an issue but he also has the ability to make some remarkable grabs so that's what you're getting when you get joan regler this is just going to be a quick side note his blocking is pretty horrendous he shows really nice willingness to block and he's not like shying away from contact but he takes really poor angles and he consistently whiffs you can see this block against literally anybody this block against Ohio State and completely whiffs on the defender and takes a bad angle and he does this repeatedly his film is littered with these types of poor block attempts and when he does get his hands on you he does show again pretty good willingness to block and he has the ability to be an okay blocker, but he's not bringing much to the Philadelphia Eagles offense blocking-wise. And again, you're not drafting a player of his caliber to come in and be an elite run blocker. No, you're drafting him to bring speed, and he brings more than enough speed to this offense. 
Now an overall summary, uh, I really like this pick. He brings elite speed to the offense that they previously didn't have. And he has the ability to make, you know, make the first guy miss. He has the ability to make contested catches when he has to. He has the ability to just completely juke people and run past them. He has the ability to return kicks. And again, he does have some drop issues. He needs to iron those out. His blocking isn't good. His route running, it's not something I've really touched on here, but I really like his slants, his sluggos, his most of his deep routes. He's pretty, he has the nuances down for those routes, I'd say. The rest of them, they need some polishing and ironing out, and his route running on almost the rest of the route tree is not as polished as it is for the slants and the rest of the, the deep, deep routes. But overall, it's something he can work on. And the problem with John Rager is, it's all things that can be fixed by good coaching and him putting in the work. And when I look at a player comp, I think his ceiling and the best case scenario for Jalen Rager, I see an Odell Beckham with slightly more speed, but also slightly less explosive good catches. I think Odell Beckham is not completely out of the range of possibilities for him. And when I look at his worst case scenario, I see a faster Nelson Aguilar. So if he can, you know, surpass those expectations of Nelson Aguilar and put together, you know, closer to Odo Beckham. And I, again, again, I'm not saying he's going to be an Odo Beckham, but that's just what I'm seeing on film. I see an Odo Beckham light player and I see Nelson Aguilar type problems. So overall, I'd grade this pick a solid B+. I really like what the Eagles did here, and I know lots of fans are going to dislike this pick just because Justin Jefferson is, again, flashier, more well-known, and he played with a bigger on a bigger school with a better quarterback on the biggest stage in college sports. I can understand it, but the, for the needs that the Philadelphia Eagles needed and the needs they had, I think Joe Rigger was the best pick they could have made.